A fiery horse with the speed of light, a call of dust, and a hearty Ohio silver. The Lone Ranger. Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Oh, Silver! Let's go, big fellow! The Lone Ranger and his Indian companion Tonto headed southward along the trail from Pecos. For two days they had followed the trail of Chet Mifflin, notorious gunman, and his three companions, who had terrorized the Pecos Valley for several weeks. Look like Mifflin, other crooks. Know them being followed. From the way they've kept on the move, it's possible, Toto. No, it ain't not good. Soon storm come. Rain wash away tracks. We'll find shelter before the storm breaks. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. The masked man and Indian took shelter in a deserted miner's shack back off the trail. It was sundown when the rain finally stopped. Then they rode a few miles further and made camp in the hills near the town of Rockville. Toto rode toward town to buy supplies. As the Indian approached the edge of town, a commotion broke out at the other end of the main street. Uh, something happened. Get him up, scout! A few moments later, Toto pulled to a stop before the bank where a crowd had gathered. Oh, scout, oh, fella. Easy, scout, easy, fella. Yeah, they were three of them. Yeah, they came out shooting. Anyone see what they look like? Oh, four men did this behind the faces. One of them was taller than the other. Yeah, that's true. Right. We'll get a posse together try to trail them. Get your horses, meet in front of my office in ten minutes. All right, oh, yeah. Maybe a Chet Mifflin. Me go tell the Lone Ranger. Easy, scout, easy, fella. Get him up, scout. Toto returned to the camp in the hills and told the Lone Ranger what had happened. If Mifflin and his men are the ones who robbed the bank, they'll cover their tracks well. Ah, sky cloudy. It'll soon be plenty dark. Go back to town, Toto, and wait around the cafe until the posse returns. Find out if they happen to get a line on the crooks. I'll ride with you and wait in the grove on the edge of town. Uh, easy, 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 Come on, Toto. Come on, Toto. Meanwhile, in a hideout cabin in a hollow, miles the other side of town, 
Chuck Mifflin and his two followers were dividing the bank loot. Uh, it's evenly divided. <laughs> That was about the easiest robbery we've pulled in all the time we've been together, huh, fellas? <laughs> yeah, that's right, Jed. Cal and I had a laugh the easy way you walked to the teller's window and made him fork over the cash. Uh, I reckon the posse's out right now trying to pick up our trail. Oh, we're safe enough. You're too smart for him, Jet. Going out of cover tracks like you do. Maybe so, but don't forget that Indian I spotted up in Pecos. Oh, I told you ride with a masked armory who helps the law. If they trailed us down this way, we're not safe yet. That storm covered our tracks back along the trail. I know. But I'd sure like to be sure they aren't too close if they did start after us. Well, I think it'd be a good idea for you to ride back to the cafe in town and sort of look around. Don't you think that'd be kind of risky right now? Oh, no, I don't. Vern is sort of average in looks and size. Nobody in town saw his face. He'd be safe enough. Anyway, it's best to know if the posse got a line on us. Well, I'm willing to go. I'll hang around an hour or two, then come on back. See you later. At the cafe in town, Cottle stood in the shadows, listening and watching. Finally, the men from the posse entered with the sheriff. Cover tracks. Yeah, we lost him without any trouble. Yeah, don't forget, man, it was dark. Maybe if we set out in the morning, we'll have better luck. <laughs> the cook Vern, who had arrived at the cafe just a short time before the posse, stood at the end of the bar listening with a smile on his face. Yeah, I sure wish somebody had a good look at those crooks. Of course, we know one was taller than the other two, but that's no help in spotting them. Vern leaned on his elbow and looked around nonchalantly. Then his eyes rested on Tonto. He noted the fringed buckskins and the fine guns, and he remembered Chet Mifflin's description of the tall, well-built Indian who rode with a masked man who helped the law. The outlaw didn't change expression as he turned away, but he watched in the mirror until Tonto finally left the cafe. Then Vern walked slowly out after him and stood in the shadows on the cafe veranda. Dressed in buckskins and wearing fine guns. He rode away on a big paint horse. Holy mackerel. That means the two armories you told us about did trail us here, Chet. Yeah, I reckon they did. I figured I'd better come and tell you right away so we could hit leather before they pick yeah. up our trail to the hideout. Look, we better get going as soon as possible. Now, wait a minute. Let me think, will you? If they manage to trail us this far, it won't be long before they'll pick up our trail again. They're both plenty smart. All the more reason for hitting leather and getting out of here tonight. That's what I say. Shut up a minute, both of you. I've decided we're not going to leave tonight. Hey, are you loco? Hey, if they find this hideout and tip off the law... Now, huh? look. They don't have any way of knowing we found out about them being in this neighborhood. When I hear, if they do find this hideout, they'll try to move in on us without bothering to get the law. But if they're as smart as you say, Chet, even if we are three against two... It's risky to take the chance of getting the best of them. I agree with Vern on that. I told you, let me think a minute. And I've come up with a pretty good idea. Yeah? What is it? We'll make the first move against them. Oh, now I know you're local. Now look, Chet. Cal and I both agree you're plenty smart. But from what you've told us of those two, I'll island... show you I'm just as smart as you think I am. Now listen close and I'll tell you how we'll go about it. Am I listening? Yeah, start talking. Vern, you look like the average type of fellow, like I said before. You could easily pass for a cowpoke, for instance. Well? Well, when we came to pull this job, we passed a big spread about five miles back, remember? Oh, yeah, the, uh, the bar C. I noticed the sign over the entrance gate. Sure. Now, I met a fellow in Pecos who used to work at that ranch. He did a six-month stretch in prison for helping run off some of the bar C cattle one night. Well, what's he got to do with all this? He told me something about that place. It's owned by a rancher named Calhoun. 
The foreman's name is Tex Darby. Well, get to the point, Chef. What's all this got to do with the mast hombre and that engine? Just this. Byrne will ride to the sheriff's office right, right now, tonight. To the sheriff's office? Jocelyn Catfish. Well, now, don't get excited. It'll be all right. Vern, you tell the sheriff exactly what I tell you to. Things will work out just fine for us. Now, here's what I want you to say. Later that evening, the crook Vern entered the sheriff's office in town. Evening, Sheriff. Uh, howdy, mister. What brings you here? Well, one of the cow folks out on the Bar C spread where I work brought news of the bank robbery that happened late this afternoon. Yeah? What about it? I got to thinking when I heard there were three men, one taller than the other two. You mean maybe you've seen them? Oh, not since the robbery. But early this morning, four riders came along the trail near our spread. I noticed three of them were white, and the other a well-dressed Indian. Yeah, go on. As they went by, I heard one of them say to the Indian... You go into town and see how things are, then come let us know. Later, I went to town, and I saw that same Indian hanging around the bank. When I was talking about it at the bunkhouse, the boys had the idea he might have been a spy for the three crooks who robbed the bank later. Why, Thunder, maybe you have something there, mister. Just after the robbery, I saw a tall, well-dressed Indian ride up and listen as we all talked about it. And he must be a spy for the crooks. In fact, one of our men saw the same Indian snooping around the cafe tonight, just standing in the shadows. Gee, I wonder. We thought maybe if you watched, he might come snooping around again, maybe in the morning. Then you could grab him and make him tell what he knows. Hey, Jiminy, that's a good idea. We'll watch for that Indian, and the minute he shows up in town, we'll grab him on suspicion. But I want you here to identify him as the one you saw riding with those three men this morning. Sure. I'll come back early in the morning and wait around in case you catch him. Fine, fine. I wish we had more law-minded citizens like you, mister. Thanks. I'll see you in the morning, Sheriff. Early the following morning, before setting out to search for the three crooks, Toto rolled into town to the blacksmith shop to have one of Scout's shoes tightened. Old Ranger again waited in a nearby grove. Uh, have your horse ready in a jiffy, Indian. Sure is a fine-looking thing. Uh, Scout, plenty good horse. That's the Indian I was telling you about, Sheriff. Yeah. I saw him in the cafe in the winter after hunting for the crook. All right, Indian. You come with us. I have some questions to ask you about that bank robbery. Me not crook? Me not help rob bank? But he must know the men who did. Why do you say that? We'll ask the questions, Indian. But I don't mind telling you that you were seen with three men riding past the bar sea spread yesterday morning by this cowpoke. And you were later seen hanging around the bank. A couple of hours before the holdup. Well, that's not true. Then I saw you myself when you rode up and listened to what we had to say just after those crooked pals of yours made a getaway. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We just come to town then. We just hear about robbery. Yeah, he'll try his best to lie out of it, Sheriff. But he's the one, all right. He's with a tall fella and two about my size when they rode past the bar scene. Me not ride with three men. Him not tell truth. Look, Indian, if you're calling me a liar, hold it, I'll... hold it. Don't draw your gun, mister. I want this Indian in good condition to be questioned. Look at those buckskins and those guns. I reckon it took plenty of cash to buy those. Yeah, maybe he stole them. That paint of his is unusual for an Indian to be riding. Yeah. Get your horse. Now, who's going to pay me for fixing that shoe? Me pay. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Look, he has plenty of cash, too. Yeah, he's a spy for those crooks, all right. Come on, Indian. You have a lot of talking to do. Me not talk. Well, if you don't, you'll rot in jail. Come on. You're going to the jailhouse right now. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue. Chet Mifflin's plan was working well. The sheriff listened to the crook burn, and Tonto was picked up on suspicion and taken to jail. Since he refused to talk, he was put into a cell and left there. Meantime, the Lone Ranger waited in the grove. Tonto's been gone almost two hours. This guy's my face and run to Tonto with me. Disguised and without a mask that might bring questions, the Lone Ranger left the great horse Silver hidden in the grove, walked into town, and entered the cafe. Something for you, stranger? Oh, no, not right now. I'm uh, looking for someone. Oh, make yourself at home. Did the sheriff and his posse get a line on the crooks who robbed the bank yesterday? Well, I hear they picked up an Indian oh, who were spying for those outlaws. I understand they have him over to jail right now. An Indian? Yep. I reckon he's in with them all right. He wears fancy buckskin, fine guns, and was riding a big paint horse. I saw him hanging around here last night. You mean they suspect the Indian only because of his clothes and gear? Not only that. I hear a cowpoke from some nearby spread saw that Indian yesterday morning riding with three hombres who answered the description of the crooks. I reckon the sheriff will make him talk one way or another. I doubt it. See you later. Still without his mask and with his features disguised, the Lone Ranger walked along the street to the front of the jail, where a small group of men were talking. Deputy, did the sheriff get him to talk? So far, the red skin hasn't said anything except that he doesn't know the crooks or anything about the robbery. Maybe he's telling the truth, Deputy. Huh? Yeah, don't be loco, mister. That cowpoke who tipped off the sheriff described that engine even before we saw him right in the town this morning. Where's the cowpoke now? He's in the sheriff's office. I may be able to add something to what he's told the sheriff about the Indian. Well, in that case, you better go right in and see the sheriff. I think that's what I'll do. There, that red skin still refuses it. What do you want, mister? Good morning, sheriff. I heard about the Indian you picked up for questioning. Well, yeah, what about him? Has he talked yet? No, yeah. Hey, hold on, stranger. Why should you come in here asking me questions? I thought of a plan that might help you, Sheriff. Oh, is this the man who tipped you off about him? Yeah, yeah. He works out at the Bar C spread. That's right. What, the Bar C? How's Mr. Calhoun's rheumatism these days? Oh, well, he's getting along all right. I see. Glad to hear it. Uh, uh, look, mister, if you have a plan that might help... Since the Indian refuses to talk, Sheriff, I suggest you turn him loose and have him followed. He may lead you and your men to the hideout of the crooks. Uh, maybe that's a good idea. I don't think so, Sheriff. If I were you, I'd keep him in jail. But my friends and I, that is, the fellas at the ranch and I, talked it over. We figured maybe if you kept the redskin long enough, say through tonight... His pals might try to help him escape. We could all be watching and grab him. I think my plan is better, Sheriff. He'd be sure to lead you to the hideout. I'm inclined to agree with you. Don't listen to him, Sheriff. Do what I suggested. We're sure to catch him that way. Nope, nope, I've decided. I'll tip the man off to what we're going to do. Then in a little while, we'll turn the Indian loose and then trail him. In that case, I'm going back to the range. I tipped you off about the Redskin, but since you don't want to take my advice... Well, I, I think letting him go and trailing him is a better plan. Well, I hope you have luck. So long. How soon are you going to let the Indian go, Sheriff? As soon as I go out and tip off the posse. We'll keep out of sight until he, he rides from town. Then we'll trail him. I might as well go tell the man to get ready right now. <laughs> The Lone Ranger, in disguise, went outside with the sheriff. Then, while the sheriff was talking to the men, the masked man slipped away from the crowd unnoticed and went to the cell window behind the jail. Making sure he wasn't observed, he pulled himself up and called to Tonto. Tonto. You savvy. Them say me spy for crooks. Yes, I know. The man who tipped off the sheriff was lying, of course... I really believe he was also lying when he said he worked at the Bar C spread. Ah, he rode away a few minutes ago. I'm going to trail him. Uh, you'll be released and then followed by the posse. Mm. Where do you want me to go? Pick up my trail in the grove. I'll follow the man who just left town and leave a clear trail for you. You think him want to crook me? It's very possible. Anyway, that's what I hope. Be sure to leave clear track for the posse to follow. <laughs> Adios. Adios. <laughs> 
Lone Ranger quickly went on foot to the grove where he had left Silver. The Lone Ranger had seen the crook burn riding from town as he and the sheriff left the jail. So it was easy for him to pick up Vern's trail. Meanwhile, Vern arrived at the hideout cabin. Oh, oh, oh. You see. Well, is my plan working, Vern? It worked all right as far as getting the Indian picked up and jailed. Good. Tonight we'll stay in the trees behind the jail. The masked man is sure to go there to help him escape. Then we'll gun them both. That part of the plan slipped up, Chad. What? Another hombre persuaded the sheriff to let the redskin loose sometime soon so the posse could trail him, thinking he'd go to our hideout. Yeah. That Indian will just lead him on a wild goose chase. How come let the other hombre out talk you? Who was he? I don't know. He's a tall, well built fellow, and I noticed he carried mighty fancy guns. What, you fool? What's the matter? That could have been the mask man I told you about. But he wasn't wearing a mask. He could have disguised his face and gone there without his mask. If it was the man I'm thinking of, he'd be smart enough to trail you here. Holy mackerel. We better van moose while we have the chase. No. We'll go up the trail a ways and wait behind some big boulders. If he does come along, we'll gun him. Then leave the territory. Let's go. The old ranger soon approached. Just before rounding a bend in the trail... The great stallion Silver threw up his head and sniffed the air. The slight breeze blowing toward him had brought the scent of humans. Sensing danger, Silver broke his stride and gave a low whinny of warning. <laughs> Relationship and understanding between the masked man and his horse were close. The old ranger realized that Silver had warned them of danger on the trail ahead. He said, Come on. He dismounted and led Silver in among the trees. Then, concealed by the tall, thick underbrush, he cautiously moved off to the side. He saw the big boulders beside the trail, and circling, he soon reached a low, rocky ridge above and behind them. He saw the three crooks waiting with drawn guns. Their backs were to him, and just as he stood up and started toward them, the crook Vern turned. Hey! Look up there! Hold it! The other two had turned and dropped as Vern called out. The Lone Ranger crouched behind some rocks on the slope of the ridge as they exchanged shots. Chet and Cal had knelt behind some thick bushes near the big boulders. And as they waited for the Lone Ranger to show himself, Chet spoke in a low voice. Cal, throw lead every now and then. Hold his attention. I'll crawl along the brush and try to get behind him on the ridge. All right, Chet. <laughs> Crook Chet moved like a snake through the underbrush. And while Cal drew the Lone Ranger's fire, the outlaw leader slowly but surely made his way in a circle to the ridge. Then, moving carefully, hidden by the thick mesquite, he finally reached a position behind the Lone Ranger. Chet slowly got to his feet, then started to raise his gun. You're not shoot! Oh! oh. Take gun. Uh, help me go, help Lone Ranger. In another moment, Tonto was beside the masked man, who had just realized his narrow escape. Tonto, you came just in time. I should have guessed Mifflin would try a stunt like this. Uh, him plenty smart. Know how to move like snake. We hear shooting. We scout and come out. Watch it. There's one more to get. Hold his attention, Tonto. I'll try to get the drop on him. Uh-huh. The third crook, Cal, had heard Chet Mifflin cry out and for a moment became panicky. Vern with a shoulder wound was useless, and Cal realized he was left to carry on the fight alone. He crouched out of sight behind the bushes, then decided to crawl around the boulders and make a getaway. Just as he started to carry out his plan, the Lone Ranger stepped from behind the boulders. Doctor, go and free. No, 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 We'll find their wounds and tie them. Well, let's go. Chet Mifflin and his two pals were brought together. The Lone Ranger and Tonto bandaged their wounds. They had just finished tying them when the posse arrived. <laughs> Hey, we heard the shooter. Reach, Indian. You too, stranger. 
You must have been in with the crooks. If we were, Sheriff, we wouldn't have wounded them and tied them. Hey, look. There's the car folk who tipped you off about the engine, Sheriff. They plugged him and tied him. He's not a car folk. He never works for Bar C Spread. Remember, Sheriff, in your office, I asked about Mr. Calhoun's rheumatism? Yeah, but... I knew Silas Calhoun. He died some months ago. You ought to know that. By thunder, that's right. The moment it slipped my mind. We trailed Mifflin and his two crooked friends to this territory. I'm sure you'll find the tall one is Mifflin. They robbed a bank in town. I noticed a cabin down there in the hollow. A search of the cabin and all their saddlebags should verify what I tell you. Hey, Deputy, go down there with a couple of men and look around. Right. All right. Within a short time, the deputy and his men return, bringing three horses. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Sheriff, cash still done up in bank wrappers was in their saddlebags. And I found this handbill in one of them with a description of Chet Mifflin on it. Here, let me see here. Bushy eyebrows, black hair, mustache, tall, scar on right temple. Yep, that one lie in there is Chet Mifflin, all right. Mifflin planned having the Indian picked up as a ruse to bring me out into the open, Sheriff. He must have found out we were following him. Well, Tonto, we finished our work here. Uh-huh. We leave these crooks in the hands of the sheriff and head back toward Pecos. Hey, we're sure thankful for your help in catching these crooks, mister. That's all right, Sheriff. We got to our horses now. Adios, everybody. Oh, Hold on, wait a minute. By thunder, I have to know more about that Indian than you, mister. Come back, I say. Oh, dry up, Sheriff. Don't try to put on an act. <laughs> what do you mean? You must have known all the time that he's the lone ranger. <laughs> This is a feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Brace Beamer.